This is Jonathan Agamfield from Pro Boxing Fans here in New York City. It's a big fight week, Taylor Serrano. Dean White, you've made it here. When did you get in? I came here yesterday, man. How are you finding it so far? Uh, yeah, I love New York, man. I've been here like a, just like a second home anyway. I've, I've been here so much times um, over the last 20 odd years, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and then, um, so I've come here, got a few meetings, met some friends and discussing some moves and stuff. And, and why not come and enjoy another historic weekend of boxing? female boxing but Madison Square Gardens can't beat it man having fun having meetings talking future and things that are gonna occur down the line yeah it's amazing so tell us a bit about your show coming up uh, in May May 14th tell us a bit about it yeah. so it's Boxing High's free you know the Black Box team Anthony um, and us guys with the Black Box team it's, it's good man we're on our third show um, we've got some IBO titles that I, um, the, the, the IBO sanctioned a few fights we're having a bit of difficulty with the British Boxing Board because the fights we are having and the opponents we're having are not getting passed so we're in a bit of a dilemma and we've only got two weeks tomorrow so I don't know if the visas are going to be able to be done and we're going to get them in and it's going to be a shame really because you know we've had a build up the guys have put their work in selling tickets and doing their stuff and you know wanting to and, and a lot of guys are training their socks up because it's a title fight you know what I mean so um, it's one of them but yeah it's all good right now yes yes champ you good um, but yeah we're just we're just trying to I think you know stay positive in that down the stretch everything will unfold and come out as meant to if we can have two IBO title fights on in my third show that must be history in itself yeah. you know what promoter has done that and gone on to put on in such a short space of time and do the shows as good as we're doing them in that space of time as well so you know right now we're just kind of um, working and trying to do put some stuff together actually I've got to get him to do an email in a minute but yeah the team man we're, I've took the boys the team with us and we're just having a few days out and when we go back it's full steam ahead to May the 14th and uh, anyone who wants to get um, come down the link's in my bio uh, we've got a website built and you can buy your tickets there you can hit up any of the fighters and it's going to be a great night of action in the summer 2022 summertime I was at the uh, the first show and you know for a small hall show it's, it's pretty sort of modern production isn't it yeah no we went we went high end production you know we, we put our money where our mouth is and we made the production good the second show was equally as successful the third show the production was is, is meant to be even higher but that's only if the title is on the line I don't want to spend unnecessary money and, and, and when it's not necessary right now because it was a title fight I wanted to go just that bit more special but um, we're going to have to see what happens um, it's just a shame though man. we're just very frustrated that um these kind of things are happening but yeah you know we, we try man look, look, all we can do is I try and do what I'd like to see and what I'd like to you know the atmosphere the entertainment I'm a boxing man through and through through and through that's why I'm here in New York I'm a boxing fan I travel the world enjoying boxing doing what I love talking about the things I love boxing and uh, yeah just this is what life is for for living well, that's at the uh, Tolworth Recreation Centre, so uh, get down there. Um, Dean, obviously going back to last weekend, didn't go your way with Dillian White. Uh, just reflect on the whole experience, though. You got to walk with him to the ring in front of 94,000 fans. For a personal note, how, how did you find that all? No, that was amazing, man. That was something, you know, that will uh, live with me forever, man. You know, the fans there um, were amazing as well. Like I said um, to someone earlier, I said afterwards, after it was all said and I was walking back, they were just saying, you know, do you know, do you know, chanting, and they were saying, look, we love you and Dillian, man, we're definitely Dillian fans, but we're Tyson fans, man, Tyson is just a hell of a guy, a hell of a champ, and we come to support him, we was going to go off into the sunset now, and we'll be back supporting Dillian and rooting for him, and, um, and that's why we love this sport, man, because, you know, fans, they, they know who they want to support, and, you know, it, it, was, it weren't our night, we was very, very gutted, um, but we got we got to just kind of um, accept what's got gone on, um, make sure we go back to the drawing board, make sure Dillian's health is first, it is the most important thing, um, and that he looks after himself and we just come back and make sure we, we, we make amends and when, when, a, when a, a second opportunity um, op presents itself, you know, we're prepared and, and willing and ready and able to go and take that chance. How is Dillian in himself? It's been a few days since the fight. How's he, how's he managing? All right, funny enough, he phoned um, my partner just now, literally, when we were sitting there. So I spoke to him, he's cool. He's um, doing whatever he's doing. I'm not even sure what he's doing at this junction, but he's good. I've been speaking to him the last few days. I was actually meant to phone him when I arrived because I was on the plane and he phoned me. And then I said I'd phone him when I get here. But he's cool, man. Obviously, he's gutted. 
as we all are, and, and it's hard, you know, when you win, you've got everyone with you. When you lose, it's just a very few family and friends that are going to be with you together to go through this journey and, and kind of mourn the moments and think about missed opportunities because it was a missed opportunity. And, and, and that interview with um, Sugar Hill just now, um, that is, is, what's the word, vindication for what I've been saying when I say how close it was in the chess match. People were saying Dylan was getting his head boxed off. If you understand boxing, that was a very technical boxing match in there with Tyson Fury being obviously a hell of a boxing man and understanding, negating the stuff what Dillian was doing. But Dillian was playing his part in boxing and making it a contest. It weren't on walking the park. They had to think, and that's what he was saying here. So I'm happy. So when I say things and people say, oh, you're just chatting out your ass, I'm happy that he's done an interview with me and said exactly that. Because they was probably even surprised. Even when Fury come up, he said, I'm just very surprised how technical Dillian is. He's actually a lot smarter than I've gave him credit for. Because obviously, I thought we was going to walk through him and get him out there because we thought it was a plodder going to come forward. And he's actually came out of South boxing, stepping off, using angles and fainting, which these are things we weren't sure that he was going to do. We were looking for him to walk forward, throw big left, throw body shots, and just walk onto the uppercut. You know what I mean? So he showed a different side. But like I said, Dylan's always been a boxer puncher. But, you know, it is what it is. Look, we'll come back again. It's just that. The way uh, you know Dillian approached the fight, both men, it's probably fair to say, were quite cautious for the opening six rounds. Did you think Dillian could have been a bit more aggressive, or do you think he had to save himself for the lo the later rounds? Listen, everyone knows what Tyson Fury does. He comes on strong in the later rounds. He's been there. He's a champion. The champions know how to to you know push the the buttons on down the stretch because you know the championship rounds are the key rounds to win. So I think obviously the, you know Dillian was saving himself somewhat. Fury was saving because Dillian was punching him hard to. The body he was breathing hard he came back with somebody shot but they're both smart guys you know but he took an opportunity he saw Dillian you know became square and that uppercut came from nowhere and then you know it, the rest is history so obviously we you know I know you've been asked about the push um, just reflecting on we know it's illegal but I, you know it's, I just don't want to make it a big thing continuing talking about the push mm. you know what I mean because nothing's going to change but the push is illegal mm. you know what I mean because if for example there wasn't a knockdown and he pushed him and he stumbled and hit the ropes. The ref would have reprimanded him for that. Don't you think? Think about him pushing him and he stumbled all the way back to the ropes and he said, hey, what the fuck? The ref would have went, hey, no pushing. No pushing. They did that. You're not allowed to do that. The ref would have said that. But obviously, he went down. We understand the game. It's just what it is. Look, look I don't want to discredit what Fury's done. He, he picked a great shot. Dillian made an error in he went for a shot came square got caught cool. it is what it is they set that up Look, I don't even think they set it up he does, I thought they set it up but he just told me they didn't he just saw an opportunity and took it so it is what it is but I knew they was going to be looking for the uppercut you know what I mean but look it's boxing it's easy so easy talking from here you know what I mean but it's those guys that go in there and put their life on the line they both came out there Dillian's healthy Obviously, Tyson won. He's going to go off, but they said some good stuff, and you know they believe Dillian will be a champion in the future. They said he was strong like a bull, and he's definitely got good boxing skills and IQ to come out boxing Southpaw. They said that was wild. <laughs> you get me? So and competing boxing. Did that surprise you, or did you have an inkling he was going to do that? No, that didn't surprise me. Remember, boxing is about offsetting and chess moves and trying to give them something to think about. You've got to offset things with people and give them something to think about. And then now, whatever they've been planning, they've been planning for an orthodox fighter and to throw shots from this angle on here. Now, if your person's boxing on the opposite side, now you, you're, you're further away from them and it's a bit difficult. So, But it is what it is. Dillian was boxing pretty well in the first round as a southpaw. Do you think maybe he could have continued as a southpaw? Or? You know what? I think he was trying to give different looks and thinking, but then obviously when with the stuff we were trying, it was a lot harder to do on Fury, getting the shots over the top. The only options were the body was there and he was getting that a bit, and even then was, it was quite difficult because once he put his arm out and put it up to his head, it was hard for, to close the distance. A couple of times he, he managed to slip close distance, go to the body, but it was you know few and far between. But we felt that down the stretch, you know, or, or after the second half, we would have we been able to get to him, but it wasn't to be. You believe Dillian can get back in the mix and become world absolutely, champion? Absolutely. Obviously, there's things we've got to go back to the drawing board and assess. Right now, he needs time off to recover and, um, you know, just take just take some rest, man. He's been training for a long time and then come back and pick the right fight, get, get a few wins or a win under his belt and then look at the top guys who are, you know, going to be around in that time. 
Do you think Dillian needs to be given a bit of credit? I mean, he wanted the Deontay Wilder fight, which people would probably say would be an easier fight than Fury. Obviously, Wilder has that monster punch, but, you know, he dared to be great, and now he's faced Fury, Joshua, to the best of the era. Yeah, he's faced a lot of the great guys in our era and time. Obviously, now he's saying he wants to fight Joshua again and wants to fight Fury again because he wants, you know, he wants to get back. He lost to Povetkin, he got the rematch and managed to... Um, you know, stop him, and then he, he wants to, you know, get the rematch with Joshua again to redeem that and get back that win as well. Fury's going to retire, so I don't think we will um, get to him, but look, you know, listen, Dillian's a warrior, man. He'll go in there and put it all, all on the line, win, lose, or draw. Final one, uh, you know, people said, Fury said himself he's the best of all time, uh, Eddie Hearn. The, the best of all time, I wouldn't go that far. I would say he's definitely the best of our era. Um, unless he, he fights Joshua, we'll, we won't fully know, but you know, we, we can say that for what he's done. You know what I mean? He's undefeated. He has faced a lot of guys. So it's just one of them, man. But I don't know more to say than that. I would, I, it's, it's different areas, different times, um, different skill sets. You know what I mean? Those guys were all good in that old school time. Remember, oh, there was some real good phrase out there, some real good boys down there. Mm. You know what I mean? So let's see. All right, Dean, appreciate you giving us some of your time. You heading out to Vegas next week for Canelo Bivol? No, my show is the week after. Got a lot of stuff to do, so I've got to get back. Well, enjoy the rest of your time in New York. Uh, big fight tomorrow, Taylor Serrano. I'm sure you'll be here. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch up again soon. Yeah, thanks very much.